As your application grows, you're gonna have more dependencies, more classes, more services, more view models, more interfaces, and what you need to do is easily resolve those dependencies. And built into .NET and .NET MAUI is dependency injection, which gives you the architecture pattern of inversion of control and specifically constructor injection. So what I'm gonna do today is break down everything that you need to know about all those fancy words that I just said, so you can be more productive when building your .NET MAUI applications. So tune in. Hey everyone, I'm James and I'm back. And today I'm gonna to be talking about a really near and dear topic to my heart because it's one that I've fought forever, which is dependency injection and specifically constructor injection and inversion of control and all these things uh, that are all fancy words just to say, well, I have this thing and I want to resolve it or get an instance of it later, you know, new it up, do these things. Now I had a video specifically around Xamarin Forms and dependency injection. And many of you were like, James, that's not dependency injection, that's a dependency service. Yeah, 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 I get it. But think of it like this, right? As our application grows, we have pages, we have view models, we have services, we have interfaces, we have a whole bunch of different things. And we need to resolve those dependencies. And you think of it like this is like a dependency is when one object depends on another object. Now, if you're coming from the ASP.NET core world, you're gonna be like, James, dependency injection, it's built in, I know everything. Yes, and it now is with .NET MAUI, which is really, really cool. Now there's really two parts. There's the dependency injection and there's that, you know, um, constructor injection. So I think of it like this is dependency injection, DI and IOC inversion of control. They're very much the same thing, but it's a, it's a way of resolving thing. But again, a dependency is an object that depends on another object. So let's look at an example. So you have a page and what does a page have? It has a view model. That is the dependency. Now in, you know, practical terms, you could just new up a new view model. Now that's fine and dandy, not a big deal, but what if you want to, you know, have a dependency of that view model? For example, maybe that view model takes in an I database service. All right, well, new up a new database service. And you're like, well, what if that database service needs an I SQL service? And what if you also need an I connectivity service? Uh, you're like, oh, like what is going on here? Like I have this huge dependency graph basically. And I think in most terms when we're building apps uh, with Don and Maui or even, you know, uh, Windows applications or, or, or web applications, you usually have a UI, some code that's in the code behind and that thing uses services. So I always see it as like three layers deep, right? Page, view model, services. And those services could be anything. It could be a database. It could be, you know, uh, one of the essential APIs, like getting access to a file picker or connectivity. So that is what we need to do. Now in .NET MAUI, there is a dependency service that's built in that's different than the old one. That is still there, but actually it's a built-in service provider that is the same one that's used in ASP.NET Core. So if you're used to dependent, you know, newing up and registering dependencies, this is gonna feel very familiar. Now there are specifically two types of dependencies that you can have, a singleton, and a singleton um, is something that is sort of like, think of it as a like global almost, it's it's a one instance, it's a single instance uh, of it, and a singleton uh, essentially says, hey, if, if you've created it once and you want to get it again later, then go ahead and retrieve that same instance. And then you have a transient, and a transient is the opposite of a singleton, a transient is, a single instance every single time. So every single time you new up a new one. So based on what your application and where you're using these services, you're either gonna want a singleton or a transient uh, that's in there. Now you can actually use this built-in service provider um, with or without the app shell. But when you use it with app shell, which is part of the default template, I have tons of videos on my YouTube all about, which you should totally use because it's amazing and it's in the default template because um, you do URI navigation and all this other stuff. But it also includes constructor injection and automatic dependency resolution. And this is the thing that developers have really, really wanted when it came to client development. And this is what this brings. And yes, there's been frameworks that have done this for a while, but now it's built in to the box. And now I'm all in. And yes, everybody should use it. And it's absolutely amazing. So let's go ahead and take a look at some code. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at this application. It's very simple. It's very similar to the file new project. 
but it has a button that I can click and it increments by 10. That's pretty nice. And also a navigate over here and I can check the internet and it says, yes, I have internet because I currently totally have internet. Now, if we look at this application, this is file new project, but I've added some MVVM goodness to it. If you don't know about MVVM model view view model, uh, sort of a way of abstracting your code, separating concerns. And I have a video that I'll put up over there too. Now, this is just a, a shell, which I highly recommend you use shell. It's the file new project. It adds a lot of nice things and you'll see why in this video, but there's just news up the main page. And if we look at the main page, we can see that it has some labels. It has um, this, this label here that's binding to count with a string format. It has a button that says click me to increase the count and another one to navigate. If we look at that code behind, it's quite straightforward. It, there's not a lot. It just news up a new main view model. And that main view model over here is very, very simple. It's using the community toolkit for .NET and MVVM. So if you don't know about that, it adds these awesome attributes to do source generation of all that MVVM stuff, uh, which is rad. I have a video, which I'll put up there and down there too. Uh, but I have a simple count, increment the count, and then this I command to navigate, and that goes to the detail page. Now I've also registered this detail page with my routing system inside of the app shell. So this says, for the string detail page, create a new detail page. So that is why here I can say name of detail page and I'll know to navigate to that page. Now that detail page is also straight, straightforward. It has a button, it has a view model, and that view model over here is a little bit more complex. Uh, it still fits on one screen, which is nice. Uh, it has an eye connectivity service, which is coming in from Microsoft Maui networking, uh, and it just gets the current instance of it. Then down here, what this is doing is it says has internet, um, and then it just displays if it has internet or not, which we saw. So let's talk about the dependencies here. We have the view models, and we also can see that we have this connectivity um, thing as well. So this, this also is a dependency because if I was doing unit testing, I would want to mock out this I connectivity. So let's go into our Maui program. And this builder is very similar to the ASP.NET Core uh, kind of host builder model. So here on the builder itself, I can say builder.services. And this gives me an iService collection to register my dependencies uh, with the Maui application. So I can add a singleton or a transient. So when we think about this, the main page, the main view model, there's only one of them which means that's a good indicator that I can register anything as a singleton. So I'm going to say, all right, well, let's do our main view model here. Perfect. And we've registered that as the singleton. Now the detail page, that one is a little bit different, right? We're only actually navigating and creating a new page and it might be different. Maybe it's different data. So I probably want to create a new one every time. So I'll do builder.services.add transient, like I talked about. And we'll do detail view model. All right. Now this is kind of cool because you can register your dependency chain here. Now, if you want to get them, well, it's a little bit tricky because we want to actually access and get rid of this new creation over and over again. So surprisingly, um, when you build it up, that's when it's going to do the registration. It's going to do stuff. So if I was to say var app equals builder.app and just return the app. Here we can look at that app and we can see it also has a services um, service provider. And here I can actually say get service. There's get service, get services and, and things like that. So I can get those back uh, automatically. So for example, if I say get service main view model, it's going to access and get that singleton back. If I did detail view model, it would create a new one every single time I called that. Now, this is a little bit of bummer because, you know, I have my Maui app dot services over here. And you know, it's not actually a Maui app dot services. It's not a static. So if I needed to expose this, I'd have to create it as a, a static, save this iService provider around. That just seems like not the greatest of practices. So there's a nifty way of getting access to these. And I have this service provider. And I'll give all the credit to David Ort now because I stole this from his Weather 21 app. So if we take a look here, this is my service helper. And the service helper gives me access to the service providers. Okay, this is actually really neat. So this is something, like I said, like I stole from David Ort now, but what happens here is that each lower level platform has access to 
the iService provider. So we can see here we have Windows, Android, and iOS as well. So if we toggle this to Android, we can see that that lights up there. And it created this very simple static method to get the service off of the current services that is there, which is really, really cool. So if we toggle that back and forth, we see that light up. Now, now what we want to do is use this and call get service. And I know what you're saying, James, you're like, James, uh, oh my goodness, this looks exactly like the dependency service that you did a video on. Like, no, 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 it's different. Trust me. Trust me on this. You got to trust me. There's already singletons and transients. That's different. So, so bear with me. Let's go into the main here and let's call into that service helper, not server, but service, service helper dot. Okay. Now when we do that, we're going to bring in that nice little helper. There we go. And I'm going to call get service of main view model. Perfect. Perfect there. All right. Now what I can do is I can also come into the detail page Let me put a breakpoint here detail view model. There we go. Awesome. And let's just go ahead and add a breakpoint here, add that using statement and let's debug it again. Now, oh, there we go. Make sure I actually write the correct code. So when we do this and make this call, right, what's going to happen is that the main view model will only have one instance and that detail view model will have a new one every time. So now when I come over here and I say, click, 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 that's good. Navigate. Check this out. We're requesting our detail view model, skip down. And sure enough, here is my check internet command and all this goodness that I have all registered hundred percent. So that is good. Now in this approach though, you still aren't doing any constructor injection. You're not doing anything special, but it does come with a really cool caveat, which is that you are actually able to register dependencies of dependencies through constructor injection. Now, what that means is if I go into this detail view model, instead of accessing connectivity.current, I could pass in an I connectivity of connectivity. And instead of grabbing that singleton, we can just set it here. So this is really, really fascinating because so far, We've just looked at registering simple services and then getting them. But now what we're going to do is resolve dependencies of dependencies. So let's check this out. So if we go back into our Maui program, we're going to have to register that. So I'm going to say builder dot and you know, the connectivity service, you got to decide like, is it a singleton or a transient? Well, it's already static. So, you know, let's just register it as a singleton, um, add singleton. I'm going to say I connectivity. And here uh, you can actually pass in connectivity dot current in there, and that's going to register connectivity dot current as I connectivity. So you actually have this way of when you're doing interfaces of passing in, you know, the contract and then the implementation of what would be there, which is quite nice. So now if we run this again, when we create that detail view model, we'll not only get the detail view model, but if I go ahead and add a breakpoint here the connectivity service will also be passed in, which is like really cool, right? So here I'll just navigate around, boom. And sure enough, there is my connectivity implementation passed in 100% automatic. All right. So that is really, really neat already. Okay. So I love that. I just simply love everything about that. And if you want to take it a step further, you could, for example, actually register your pages with the service too, right? So now we're kind of coming in here and we're calling the service model, but it sure would be great if we didn't have to. Now, this is where things get tricky, okay? Because if you are not using shell, how are you supposed to tell the app when you create a new page to go register that stuff? It's quite tricky, to be honest with you. You can create a new constructor and then you could pass in the objects and then get the services from all of them, but it's really not the best approach. That is why I love shell for doing this. Okay. Because it handles all of the complexity automatically for you. So here's what we want to do. We actually want to pass in the view model. All right. And here I'm going to get rid of this call VM. Beautiful. I'm now 
going to go into the detail page and do the same exact thing. So VM, perfect. I'm going to type in VM here. Awesome. All right. So now we're passing in our dependency of the view model into this. Now what we need to do is you guessed it. I'm going to come in and say builder.services.add singleton. I'm going to add the main page. All right. And then I'm going to do builder.services.add transient of detail page. Okay. So now we have not only our pages, but our view models and our connectivity service all registered and everything is being passed in via constructor right here. Now, in fact, what I love about this model is that if you look at the app over here, the app actually news up a new app shell inside of here. So this is super good. And this handles everything for you automatically. If you weren't using shell, you could actually dependency inject the main page in here too. Like if you wanted to, you could say, you know, main page page, and then, you know, replace this as, as page, for example. Uh, but since we're using shell, we don't really need to do that, which is good. That's really cool. So now let's check this out because when I run this, I'm going to note that here on my detail, on my detail view model, when I navigate to that page, if I open this up, we're going to see that all of our breakpoints line up. Okay. So we have our click counter, which that view model is coming in. I'm going to navigate here. Our detail view model gets created, passing in the connectivity because it's been automatically resolved. I'm going to hit continue and note here that our detail view model has automatically been created. It's going to be assigned to our binding context all by navigating 100%. So when you call in your code, app shell current go to async that is going to notify Don M. Maui that, Hey, it is go time. It is time to go see what is registered. And if my page is registered, I can automatically start going and finding the dependencies of those pages. All right. Now I ran down a lot. And I hope that you rewatch this video about 58,000 times, but I hope that I helped explain why dependency injection, constructor injection, inversion and control, all those things are so amazing in Don and Maui, especially when using shell. And this is really cool because the more dependencies line up, it automatically handles all those things for you. A great example is the podcast application. I've talked about a lot here, but the .NET podcast application, I'll, I'll put a link down below. This will actually use native services that have been registered too on iOS and Android to do audio playback. And it does all the pages, all the new models. Additionally, if you're looking to get started building and learning .NET MAUI, I have an entire workshop that's over on the .NET presentations. There's a bunch of workshops there. It's a six part course. You can file new up to building and deploying a whole app. You're going to learn about navigation, passing parameters with shell, and of course, doing dependency injection and doing all these really cool services. So I hope that you, you know, get a full grasp of what's going on here, why it's so unbelievably flipping cool. And that why you should totally be using shell and dependency injection all the way down from top to bottom. I'll put all the links in the show notes below and links to other things like MVVM, the community toolkit, and so much more. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you made it this far, give it a thumbs up. I'm serious. That super duper helps the channel. Honestly, I want to reach more people, share the down at Maui goodness with everybody. And there's a share button. You can share it on anywhere. You put it on LinkedIn, you put it on Twitter, you put it anywhere, about all the places. Just share it with people. YouTube algorithm loves that stuff. And finally, don't forget to hit and smash that subscribe button like every single YouTuber has told you forever and ring that notification bell so you get new videos when I put them out here on my channel. Super appreciate it. Leave comments below. I'll totally get to them and I hope to check you out soon.